Number 11, you're solving this particular uh, inequality. So you're going to have either numbers multiplied together or divided, and it's going to be less than or greater than zero. So the process is going to be solved the same. And so uh, when I originally introduced this in the notes, I talked about there's two different methods. You could use the number line method or you can use the table method. Now I'm going to use the table method here, but you could use either method. If you're going to use the table method, then these factors here, you're going to put them on the table. If these have powers on it, you also want to make sure you include the powers also when you put them on your table. So don't just put these as is. If they have a square or a cube, you want to also include those on your table. Now these don't have any powers, so we don't have to worry about that, but just something to keep in mind. So I'm going to, I'm going to put all four of these down like this on a table. When I set these equal to zero, I'm going to get three different answers, and so those are going to go here on these three, on these three lines. So I want to make sure I have one more column beyond that as well. So I'm going to have three numbers here. Make sure I have a column on the end, and so this is the the table. Now I have to figure out what numbers are going to go here. So up here, I need to figure out what my values are that are going to go on the table. I do that by setting each one individually equal to zero. So I'll take that first one set equal to zero, I'll get one half. Take that equal to zero, I'm going to get seven thirds. The last one I'll set equal to zero and I'll get a four. So I get these three numbers. I'm going to put them in order from smallest to largest. How do you know which one's the smallest? You can always divide those in your calculator and get a decimal answer, but one half is going to be the smallest. So 7 thirds is just a little bit more than 6 thirds, which would be a 2, which means that's the next biggest one, 7 thirds, and then 4 would be the largest one. You're going to pick test values in between each of these numbers. You're going to put them into the expressions on the left-hand side, and that's going to give you either a positive or negative as a result. So for this one, I'm going to test a 0. Between 1 half and 7 thirds, I'll use a, a 1. Between 7 thirds and 4, I can use a, a 3 because this is a little bit bigger than 2. So between 2 and 4, I can use 3. And then I'll put 5, uh, and that'll be the test value I'll use for that one. We're going to put all these into expressions on the left hand side. If I put 0 in there, I get 0 minus 1, negative. Next, I'll put a 0 in that one, I get a negative. 0 minus 4, negative. Next, I'm going to put a 1 into these. If I put a 1, 2 times 1 minus 1 is positive. 3 times 1 minus 7, negative. 1 minus 4, negative. Next, I'll put in 3. 2 times 3 is 6, then minus 1 is a positive number. 3 times 3 minus 7 is a positive number, but 3 minus 4 is negative. Then I'll put in a 5. 2 times 5 is 10 minus 1, positive number. 3 times 5 minus 7, also a positive number. And 5 minus 4, also positive. Once you get the table complete, then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply down each of the columns. And we're going to put our answers across the top here. Three negatives will give you a negative as a result. Two negatives as a positive times positive, you get a plus. You get a positive and a negative, that gives you a negative there. And then all positives, you get a plus. So we get negative, positive, negative, positive. We're finally ready to write our answer. Now, it's important to take a look at whatever sign you see here. If you see less than or less than or equal to zero, you're looking for negative inter uh, intervals here, uh, sections. So here's negative and here's a negative. If I see greater than or greater than or equal to, you're looking for where you see pluses across the top. So we're looking for negatives because we have a less than. So my answer is going to be this section up to negative one half and then the section between seven thirds and uh, four. So I'm going to do uh, this here. I'm going to do two x uh, negative infinity up to one half and then I'm going to go from seven thirds to four. Because it's less than, I'm always going to be using parentheses for everything. If I had a less than or equal over there, then I'd be using 
brackets for my answer, but because it's less than, I'm going to use parentheses for everything. And this is going to be our final answer. That means that as long as I pick an X either in this region or this region, that means it'll be guaranteed to, be, to give us a true statement when I plug it back into the original equation.